All right, so welcome back to Night Hacking at Javaland. Um, our next interview is with Christoph Engelbert. Hi, Christoph. Hi. And we're going to chat a little bit about how to keep memory off of your heap. Um, I think we have a demo to show, and we'll chat about various stuff. So why don't, first, why don't you do a little introduction for yourself? Talk about you know, what you're doing. OK. Um, as, as you can see, I'm, I'm working for Hazelcast, so uh, we're doing some. Here, let me, let, let me help your employer. Let feel like help. they've got proper yeah definitely proper promotion. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm working for Razorcast. Uh, we're building a cluster solution environment, uh, doing data partitioning over uh, multiple JVMs and all that stuff. Um, and one of the topics we um, we work on is Offheap as well. Cool. All right, and you you gave a talk here at JavaLand, right? Yeah. I gave a talk yesterday morning uh, about off heap and, and how you, how to keep your data off the heap and stuff. Yeah. So all right. So let me ask you why why would you want to keep your data off the heap? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll give you the newbie prompting question. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's a very common question. Um, actually, it's either you have a lot of pressure on the garbage collector and you want to lower the pressure, or you have a lot of data that that have mid-term life lifetime, so they're not dying in Eden or survivor spaces, but you won't, don't want them in generated space, um, or they j just don't fit into a normal size of heap, like 16, 23 gigabytes, whatever, something like that. Okay, so it sounds like the two basic classifications would be things where you can't get good garbage collection. Yeah, kind of. Because it so doesn't fit into the standard model, or really, really large memory. Yeah, right. So. Memory sizes uh, up to to 500 gigabytes, um, that kind of stuff. That's a lot of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on, on on the company you're working for. Yeah, no, I guess most large servers probably have that much memory, but then they're partitioned into a bunch of virtual instances. Yeah. Running different things. Right. So. But if you want to take advantage of the full server hardware, then. Yeah. Right. We either have the chance to, to uh, run multiple virtual machines in, inside of a cluster using, for example, Hazelcast. Yeah. So splitting up your heap size, uh, or you're going off heap and have one big machine. And cool. OK, so let's do a demo. Yeah, so um, um, yesterday I gave a short presentation. And um, the demo it demonstrates how to prevent garbage collection problems. So there is, uh, let me find it. Uh, there it is. There's a small example. It creates 50 million objects, um, one time on the heap. Uh, 50 million objects with, I guess, four gigabytes of heap. I said something like that, um, and you're suffering from from big garbage collector problems. You can do the same off heap. Um, we will show that later. So first, let's run the on heap example, and you will see on times that it has a very very big amount. Of, of time consumed. Sometimes there it is, 6.2 seconds. It goes up. And it goes a bit down due to the JIT compiler, so yeah. five, five two. So in, in general, it can save about five seconds. So if we do the same, if, if we stop it and do the same off heap, um, you can see that it is much much faster. Oh, yeah, now that. So it, it's about one second, maybe. I mean, this is kind of a micro benchmark, but it's a it, good example. It, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a time uh, kind of, of pretty playing with the garbage collector. So uh, creating more objects than the garbage collector can handle in a good way in that case. Um, but yeah, you, you see the problem. If you have a lot of data and you need to have them on heap, it's my, maybe a problem. So what, um, in this case, uh, it's, it's pretty much. Easy stuff. We get some is unsafe, um, and we're allocating a bit of memory. I know uh, the size of the object I want to store, and what my object does. It, it just writes to the base address and writes the memory directly. Uh, write the data directly to the memory. Cool. Yeah. So that's a nice alternative to um, putting stuff on the heap for special cases. I, would you recommend people? Start with doing off heap stuff or use this as like a performance tuning stage? Um, like wait it, until they're trying to tweak or tune their Yeah, app. so I, I would mostly never 
tell people to do their own off-heap stuff. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty much very hardcore and, and, and it's very C++-like. Um, there are awesome frameworks out there t for, for doing this, like Hazelcast Elastic Memory, like Terracotta Big Memory, yeah. uh, all that kind of stuff, Apache Direct Memory. But you guys probably created this for your own needs, right? Um, you use it internally at Hazelcast? Yeah, we created yeah. that internally. Uh, we're pretty much uh, out there for, for uh, version 2 of our off heap implementation. So with the next version of Hazelcast, we have a new one. And we hope it's even better. So as I said, it, it's, it's hard to do it right. and. Um, even we need a second approach on, on this one <laughs> to make it better. Nice. So um, for folks who want more references about um, the off-heap implementation by Hazelcast or a little bit about what you're doing, where should they, where should they go to find more information? About Hazelcast, um, it's, it's either hazelcast.com or hazelcast.org. So um, we're, we're not only doing off-heap. As I said, we, we're doing mostly uh, data partitioning over multiple JVMs. Um, yeah. It feels like one hash map, but it is spread over multiple JVMs, and you can get your data all over. Cool. All right, thanks very much for the short interview, Christoph. Yeah, no problem. And for those of you here at Javalands, the next interview is going to be at 1.45, and it will be with Bernd Muller on bytecode, class loading, and transformer. So stay tuned for that in the next 45 minutes, and thanks for watching.